my name is Kayla Cox. I am the owner of this here channel. Uh, if this is the first time you've ever caught me live or if you don't really know much about me, I've lost 80 pounds uh, with intermittent fasting, specifically OMAD for most of that time. OMAD means one meal a day. Uh, I eat whatever I want. I'm not keto. I'm not low carb. I don't count calories. Um, and I walk six miles every day. Um, and I really think the eating has a lot more to do with the weight loss than um the six miles a day does. Um, I'm the author of the laid back guide to intermittent fasting. Uh, and I also have courses, uh, in my slow and steady success Academy, uh, weight loss or intermittent fasting for weight loss. One-on-one is a great place to start. If you are just getting started with intermittent fasting and you kind of just feel overwhelmed. So, um, with that all being said, uh, I'll go ahead and get into some questions. I have a few that uh, people ask me on Instagram and on the YouTube community channel uh, tab. And uh, so we'll get started. So Reshma Gad on Instagram asked, uh, would you do intermittent fasting if you were breastfeeding, like a 16-8 maybe? And first of all, I'm not a doctor and I don't give out medical advice. So first I would say, talk, talk with your doctor about this because generally speaking, uh, the people who don't you know, uh, are, are not, you know, supposed to fast are usually, you know, pregnant, breastfeeding, that kind of thing. Um, I breastfed and, um, I, for, for, for all three of my children and I was always very, um, super paranoid about ever messing with my supply. Uh, I think that's crucially number one importance. Your babies are only babies for a little while. Um, so if your doctor does say like, hold off on the fasting, I would say, just be patient. Your, your babies will wean. Um, and that time really is a short period of time in the big scheme of things. Um, so do what's right for your baby first and foremost. Now, a 16-8, I think, is probably a good place to start um, as far as, you know, with, with most fasters, I think, could do that, you know, or somebody who's just starting out could theoretically, you know, go 16-8. Um, but I started out even uh, sh sh like much shorter windows, like eight hour fasting windows, barely a fasting window, but it was just about putting a time boundary around food. Um, so I would maybe even start it like if your doctor says it's okay, I would start out really, really gradually, like start out with eight hours, then go to 10 hours and then maybe 11. Um, with breastfeeding, I found I had a lot of nausea um, if I didn't eat frequently. So that might be something you, you deal with. Um, so I hope that helps you. That pretty girl Lala on uh, Instagram said, have you noticed health benefits from fasting other than weight loss? And if so, what are they? Well, yes. I mean, well, it's always difficult, I think, um, to know exactly what to attribute something to. Okay. Because like when I compare how I feel now to when I was obese, I can tell you right now, I have amazing energy. I feel, I feel much younger than I did back when I was like in my early twenties. Um, so it's, it's, there's been a lot of benefits, but I'm not really sure. Is that from the fasting per se, or is it from just losing 80 pounds? And, um, but there are some really good things, um, like, uh, for example, one is I wake up, um, really refreshed. I feel I have a lot of energy, uh, in general. Uh, I, it seems like I've, I've had more mental clarity. Um, I certainly get a lot more accomplished, um, when I'm practicing OMAD, especially now a couple of things that intermittent fasting did for me that I think are really big health benefits are it stopped my stress eating. It showed me that I was really emotionally eating. Like I was eating out of boredom or out of stress or because I was uh, sad or, you know, wh whatever. There were a lot of different reasons I was eating that had nothing to do with true hunger. Um, and through that also um, with intermittent fasting, because I had no forbidden foods, it also helped me to just get a better relationship with food. Uh, I used to think certain foods were off limits. Like I shouldn't, you know, really be allowed to have them. And so I had no stopping power. Now I have stopping power with food. Um, I feel like I've got more self-discipline, uh, a lot more self-discipline actually. Um, and, uh, just more self-control in general too. So, uh, hopefully that helps you. Um, Lola Rose on uh, the YouTube community tab said, help, I don't want to do keto with intermittent fasting. I enjoy fruit and occasional wine. I am fasting uh, on a 18-6, so eating two meals, and she, and, you, and she started nine days ago. Do I have any advice? Um, 
I don't do keto. I never did keto with uh, intermittent fast. I never did. I never did keto. Uh, period. I I have done low carb diets in the past, but I never did keto. Um, and I love wine. I love pasta. I love bread. I knew keto wasn't for me. Um, and so for, so you've been doing it for nine days, and I would say um, keep at it. Keep going. Don't really expect results. I would say until you've been consistent for six to eight weeks at that point, when you, when you've really been consistent and your body is starting to adjust, then you may start to notice some weight loss. Um, too many people will say like, well, I tried this for a week and I had no results. That's because you didn't try it for long enough. Try it for a good six to eight weeks. If you find that you are, uh, you know, not losing any weight, you might want to make your fasting window a little bit longer. Um, it could be, though, that you're at a normal weight already and maybe you only have a couple of pounds that you're going to lose. And that's, you know, going to be slow, probably. Um, just to give you an idea, on average, I lost uh, a pound a week. Uh, and that was when I was doing OMAD six days a week, cheat day on Sunday and walking six miles a day and being very consistent. Uh, when I got down to a normal BMI, though, uh, the weight loss slowed to about one third of a pound a week. So it's much slower once you get towards a normal BMI. And I recommend weighing every single day and keeping track of your seven day average, which you can do with apps like Happy Scale app and Libra Scale on Android. Um, OK, let's see. Uh, Pranisha Shrestha, Shrestha, I hope I pronounced that right, um, asked, can I take honey? during the fasting time. Okay, now and here's here's where people will disagree with me. I say, try it. Um, now, it and I should preface this by saying, it really depends on what your goals are. My goal with intermittent fasting, with OMAD, with all of this, is to lose weight and then keep it off, right? Um, if your goals are something different, then you, know, you may not wanna use honey. Um, because it will raise your blood sugar. Okay. Um, but, or, you know, at least temporarily that's normal. That's what your body is supposed to do. But, um, uh, I'm always focused on results. So for me, like I have half and half, uh, in my coffee, that's like a, um, if you don't know what that is, it's kind of like a uh, cream is what, uh, some other cultures would call it heavy cream or whatever. It's a little bit less fat than heavy cream. Um, but, I always use that. Like when I first started uh, intermittent fasting, I did uh, my coffee with cream and sugar, a tablespoon of sugar, and I was still losing weight with it. So if your if your main goal is weight loss, then I say keep it. A couple of things to note: one, you might feel hungrier after you have the honey, which can then make the fasting feel harder than it would otherwise. So, um, but I would just. I would, you know, try it and then see how it works on you. Because some people don't find that. Some people are like, I feel full after I've had that. You know, I eventually cut the sugar out of my coffee because I wanted to learn how to like unsweetened drinks so that I could just drink them with abandon during my fasting window, like LaCroix, unsweetened tea, um, you know, water, all, all that good stuff. So, um, so there you go. Uh, always, I love experimenting. So I say experiment. Elisa... Nahayo on YouTube asked, um, uh, she's a follower from Germany. She loves my simplicity. Um, she said, I started intermittent fasting in January. Once in a while, I fall off the wagon and I get into binge eating, but I never give up. She's doing OMAD. Every time this happens, I can hardly sleep and I start to curse why I fell off. Weekends seem to be a bit tricky in keeping up the consistency. Any advice? Thanks in advance. Well, um, hopefully I can help because this is something I experienced with the whole consistency thing. And this is where my cheat day came in. Uh, and it was really important to my success. And um, uh, so here, here, here was my situation. I found like you, like in 2015, I was, I was trying to be consistent with intermittent fasting. I was very, very impatient. That was my number one big no-no. Like I was just being really impatient. I was in a huge rush to lose the weight. And I ended up not sticking with stuff. But one thing that kept tri tripping me up with intermittent fasting was the weekend. I would do fine Monday through Friday. And then when the weekend came, it was like, oh, well, there's just, you know, things are different on the weekend. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, your spouse is at home more or maybe you're both at home if you're working during the week. Things are just different. And um, 
And also on Sunday, we would have a pancake breakfast. Um, my husband would make homemade uh, pancakes and they're amazing. And so then I was in, in this weird, like, okay, well I had breakfast, maybe, you know, I'll try to like make my fasting window work. It just never worked right. So I told myself Sundays I take completely off. Like it's a complete free day, day off from fasting, no rules. I mean, the, the only real rule was like, don't like overeat. Like that was the only kind of rule I had in my head and just always eat to fullness. Right. And, um, and so what I found was because I had Sunday as like that, it is always a day off. It gave me a lot of strength on Saturday to stick with my plan. Um, so that kept me really consistent on that on, on Saturdays, which tended to be the day that tripped me up. Um, so if you're not currently doing a cheat day, I mean, you can call it whatever you want, day off from fasting or whatever, try that and see how that works for you. That's, that would be my best advice. Um, but, but here, I want to congratulate you for this big thing. You're never giving up, right? Like that is, that is the key to weight loss. It really is. Just don't give up. Like you're going to mess up and it's okay. You're going to like completely go off plan. You're going to screw up. The big part is you get back on plan. You figure out what went wrong. You learn from it. You move on. So you're doing the right thing. So don't give up. I'm, I'm, I'm here cheering you on. You're doing a great job. Um, uh, so, and, and also, uh, try to learn from those, you know, like look back and see what kind of, what happened right when you fell off the wagon? Like, was it an emotional thing that was happening? Was it just a family event? Um, I, I did, the, um, I created what I called my code, like for going off plan. So that I knew that there were certain things that would come up in my life where I would have that option there of either, you know, going off plan, like eating at, you know, at a time, that I normally hadn't planned to, or try to stick to the plan. And what I told myself was I'm going off plan for those certain occasions, like business lunches or, you know, uh, fam family lunches, things like that. Or if like we go grab ice cream in the middle of the day, I'm doing that. Um, instead of trying to feel like, well, I'm not going to do it. And then I do it anyway. And then I feel guilty. And then you're, you know, completely off the wagon instead, just plan to go off plan sometimes. So hopefully that helps you. Thanks for the question. Irene Mowers uh, on the YouTube tab said, did you delete your Facebook group? Yes, I did. Uh, it had grown to, I think, 1,500 people. And um, I want everything I do to be very useful for people. And unfortunately, what was happening in that group was people were coming in who had, first of all, didn't really know who I was, what I stood for, any of that kind of thing. They would come in and have lots of questions like they would be completely lost as to intermittent fasting and then what would happen unfortunately is because of the sheer size of the group they would ask questions and then people would be giving advice that i completely disagreed with and since my name was on that group i felt like people are associating me with some really bad advice um, and i really wanted people to be helped in a meaningful way which is why i disbanded the group so it no longer exists um, uh, I, I, I really appreciate everyone who was a part of it and who, and there, and that was not the majority of people, but it was happening and I could see where that was going. So I decided to disband it. So, um, okay. Mom of four asked, uh, when and where did you first hear of intermittent fasting and what was your first thought? Okay. So this is an interesting question. I learned about it at the end of 2014. Um, and I think the first time I heard it phrased was like, um, uh, what if like every day was like Thanksgiving? <laughs> like, it, like in other words, you could eat this really big meal. Um, and that really appealed to me, like a way to lose weight where you could have a big meal. And, um, and that just kind of something clicked. And I thought that's an interesting thing. Uh, the first place I truly learned about it was from the Lean Gains blog. And just to let you know, if you go there, there's going to be some curse words and, uh, and some scantily clad uh, people in like before and after photos. However, it was the place where I really learned a lot about intermittent fasting. Martin Burkhan uh, is the guy's name who, who did the blog. Um, I think it's still uh, up and around. Um, and so my first thought was like, huh, I could, I could do that, I think. 
and um and and so i just learned as much as i could about it and and then you know eventually i finally got consistent with it and then uh once i got really consistent with it that's when i had good results so uh justin fiorini asked how are you always so cheerful well i'm glad you asked um i'm not always cheerful uh, i like doing these lives and i like doing the videos um and so that makes me cheerful um uh, a couple of things I do uh, to make myself more cheerful, I think, are I walk six miles a day. It's almost impossible to, to be in a bad mood if you walk six miles. I, I really do believe that. Um, also, like I try to really protect my myself, my, my mind, uh, my mindset. Uh, I do things like I unfollow people aggressively <laughs> on Facebook. Like if they're posting negative things, I get them out of my feed. Uh, same with Instagram. Uh, I don't watch the news. <laughs> I, uh, I try to be, uh, intentional with my day and I try to be intentional with, um, what I put in my mind. I try to make my day what I want it to be. Like I try to enjoy the day and to also start it out with, uh, being grateful for things. I try to really focus on, uh, gratitude every day. Uh, in the morning I do the, uh, I do more, uh, well, I do morning pages and I also do the five minute, uh, journal, which is like, you, uh, think of, you know, three things you're grateful for and you start the day with like an inspirational quote and you write down affirmations. So, uh, that's just some of the stuff I do to stay really cheerful. Um, but John mum says, hi from the UK. I've only recently subscribed. So I don't know if you've spoken about this before. I've had very good success with fasting, but at 44, I find myself being hit hard with perimenopausal symptoms. Uh, one being food cravings so bad. I start to tremble if I don't eat, even if I've eaten one hour ago. Oh man, that sounds rough. Um, it's spoiling all my previous weight loss. And I put on two stone, which is 28 pounds in three months. Um, any advice on hormonal lead cravings from you or anyone listening would be appreciated. Otherwise, I'm thinking of appetite suppressants. Okay, so a couple of things. Uh, I have not gone through menopause or even perimenopause, so I can't speak to that. I can tell you, just based on my experience with what I call period hunger, I can understand how the cravings can be extreme and your appetite can increase just based on hormones. So I do understand that. Um, and hopefully anybody in the comment section, if you guys are going through, uh, menopause, perimenopause, let her know, uh, what, what has helped you. Um, a couple of things I would say though, uh, first of all, talk to your doctor, which maybe you have, but talk to your doctor and make sure everything's good there. Um, but I would say, uh, I, and let's see. You didn't say like what your fasting window is. Um, so I would say this, if, if currently, let's say you're doing OMAD, make your, make your eating window longer. I, I would actually, I would probably, if I were you, I would kind of like start it over. I would say, what's a really sh short fasting window that I could stick with? Kind of like wh what I did in the beginning of intermittent fasting. I just started out with something real simple, like eight hours. And I said, okay, I'm basically sleeping through it. I understand that, but I'm going to just keep that window. And then I pushed breakfast a little bit later. So maybe just trying just to push it a little bit later and see how that works for you. Um, but ultimately, I think it's really important to listen to your body. Don't beat yourself up. Do not beat yourself up. That's like, that's the thing that can really derail us, I think, is like when you, you kind of have a little bit of a slip up, but then you just mentally thrash yourself. That's, that's really where the, the true harm comes in. So um, take it really slow. Talk to your doctor. Also, um, you know, try to be really positive in your mindset. Be patient with yourself. You're going to figure this out. You'll figure it out. Um, you could also, if, if, you're, um, if you're having trouble with food cravings also, I would give yourself the food that you're craving. Um, and and like, like, seriously, I, I would do that. Even, even, if, even if it meant like eating that thing as like a big chunk of your meal, even if it's chocolates, like I would do that. Um, just to get rid of that craving and, um, because it's not going to last forever. Um, but without like further information that that's where I would stand on that. Um, so hopefully that helps. And maybe some people in the comment section can help you. Um, I hope it goes well for you though. Uh, Diana T said, um, 
just want to let you know I'm so inspired that you, uh, with your weight loss journey, I started doing intermittent, uh, intermittent fasting and OMAD. She's on her second week. She's lost 1.8 pounds the first week. She has 42 pounds uh, to lose. And, uh, and so, uh, uh, she just said, keep up the work. So thank you, um, Diana. Uh, that's awesome. Losing about a pound a week. If you can do that, you'll lose your weight within a year, right? Um, and even if it takes a little longer than that, still, it's okay. Some people lose quicker. Some people lose slower. So half a pound to a pound. Most people aren't losing two pounds a week consistently over a long period of time, unless you have a, a lot of weight to lose. Um so just so you know, uh, I, I didn't understand that uh, in the beginning of my weight loss journey. I thought everybody loses five pounds a week if you're doing it right. Right. So um, Gia Wiseman said uh, hi from Orlando, Florida. Oh, well, that's just south of where uh, I lived for a while. Uh, what happens when you think you're being consistent, but the waiting, the weight is starting to creep up and you can't tell why she's currently doing a 24 uh, and I only have 10 more pounds to lose. I want to lose. Oh. She only has 10 more pounds that she wants to lose and she's finding it really horribly hard. Uh, uh, and right now I'm so constipated. Oh, uh, magnesium citrate isn't working. Wow. Okay. So a couple of things here. Um, it sounds to me like you are at a good weight and, and you're wanting to lose a little bit more. And, and I mean, I get that. Um, but the weight loss will probably be really, really slow. And again, I would track uh, your weight every day, weigh every morning, and then track your seven day average. See if it is truly moving. And when I say, uh, like when I, when I say moving, I mean, look at the past. Well, if, if you're already at like a normal BMI, I would say, look back at the past two to three months and see what your weight is doing over, over time. Because what can happen is it's so slow it's like, even if you have a week or two where it kind of seems like it's going up, it's like, oh no, it's going the wrong direction. It might just be that you're kind of at, you could be just plateauing for a while, which happens to everybody. Um, or it could be that like, possibly your plan has taken you maybe as far as it will take you. Um, but I would be really patient with that. I'd be very consistent. Make sure you're being very consistent with whatever plan you've chosen and give it uh, you know, six to 12 weeks, really, really when you get to this stage where you've only got like 10 more pounds to lose, it's really slow. Again, mine was a third of a pound a week. So it was super, super slow. Um, Alaya Brody, uh, she's joining from Montreal, Canada, uh, and uh, she's hoping to lose 130 pounds and rebuild her health. And I'm telling you, you can totally do it. Um, you, you totally can. Uh, a great place uh, to check out is the intermittent fasting success stories series that I do on this channel. And by the way, if anyone out there is an intermittent fasting success story, if you'd like me to interview you or share your story on this channel, I would love to interview you. Reach out to me at Kayla at six miles to suffer.com. Um, and uh, you can totally get there, Aliyah, Aliyah. I hope I pronounced your name right. Um, Beth Brown says, how long did it take? does it take you to walk six miles a day? When do you do it? All at once or in multiple sessions? Okay. Takes about two and a half hours, two, two and a half hours. It kind of depends on how slow I'm walking. I think most of the time I walk at about a three mile per hour pace. So six miles, you know, three miles an hour, two hours. So, um, now that I'm a full-time RVer, I um, generally go out and and we walk it all in one big chunk. Uh, in the beginning, though, first of all, I didn't start out by walking six miles a day. I, I worked my way up to it. And there were times in, in those early days where I needed to sit down and rest in the middle of it. And I would. I would always give myself rest whenever I needed it. Um, and it was always just about getting them in, like, uh, for me, it was 14, it's 14,000 steps. So all of the, my rule was, was 14,000 steps by midnight. <laughs> so there were times it was like 1159 and I'm getting that 14,000th step, but, um, it was all about getting it in for that day. So, um, so do it however you want to do it. It counts either way. For me, it always counted. Like, I don't care if I have to break it up into 14 sessions, a thousand steps or, or even less than that. Um, I'm going to do it. So, uh, 
let's see, BVA. I hear people talk about mental clarity. Exactly what does that mean? I think um, what most people are talking about when they say mental clarity, it just means like you can think uh, better uh, in a way. Um, like, so you know how sometimes you maybe feel like kind of foggy, you know, especially in the afternoon, you just kind of have that mental fog. You can't really like get motivated to do stuff and you feel kind of low energy and maybe you kind of have trouble concentrating. Uh, the increased, what I would call like mental clarity is I feel like I can focus on tasks better and see them through to the end. Uh, I can just work better basically. Um, uh, so uh, Puilani 42 says I've been on OMAD since January 28th and sadly have lost the same four pounds repeatedly. I've eaten a plant-based diet for over the past two years. And after some research, I'm now trying to cut down my carb intake. Okay. So first of all, you've only been at this for four weeks. So if you're, if you've lost four pounds, uh, you're actually doing really good. You're, you, you know, that's about a pound a week. Uh, so give it more time, first of all, because also if you're, a, if you're a woman, um, uh, hormonally, things fluctuate from, you know, like during the month. Uh, and that's why I say like wait six to eight weeks after you've been tracking your seven day average. So that means you're weighing every day, tracking how your seven day average is moving over the course of six to eight weeks. And that can tell you like what, you know, how fast you're maybe going to lose uh, all that, although that can vary. Um, and, and it can tell you uh, whether your plan is actually working or not. So, um, so I would just say, have patience. Uh, Shelly Reed, do you hit plateaus with the same routine or fasting with OMAD? What do you do if that happens? Okay, so I hit plateaus. Um, I think everyone hits plateaus on every single plan known to man. I really think it has to do with like your body sometimes just says, whoa, 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 what's going on? And uh, it just sells out sometimes. Um, I actually hit a plateau. I did the, a, a video is coming out on Monday about this, but... Um, I was looking at my numbers. I hit a plateau at 186. It was right after I went to OMAD too. Uh, I stayed at 186 for like a month, five five weeks. I don't know. It was, it was right out a month. Um, another time I hit a plateau at like 168. Again, like a whole month of being at the same weight. Um, my strategy with plateaus is to just wait them out. I change nothing. I love my plan. I love it. it. I find it easy. I don't want to tinker with it at all. So I didn't. And um, so I kept my cheat day. I kept walking the six miles a day. And I kept, you know, like if I was doing OMAD, probably at, at those points I was doing OMAD. So I would still do OMAD. Uh, I did not do longer fasts. I did not say I'm cutting out carbs because I knew that wasn't sustainable for me. I didn't want to try anything unsustainable, first of all. And I also didn't want to mess with my plan because I really was trying to see it as an experiment. How far will this plan take me? And, and that meant I'm just going to wait it out. I'm going to like really wait it out for a long time. And if it truly stops, then I'll tweak it. But it didn't truly stop. I mean, after, you know, about a month or so of being consistent, it started back down. Uh, so focus on consistency and being patient. That would be my best advice. Uh, because what ha what I've seen happen with a lot of people is uh, they'll they'll like rely on the longer fast. Like if they hit a plateau, then they're going to do a longer fast to try to get the weight loss, you know, kick started or whatever. But what happens with longer fast is you're losing water weight. So then what happens? You get off that longer fast, you start going back to eating the regular way, and then you put on water weight, and then that kind of like messes with your head psychologically. Uh, so instead, I say just stay with what you're doing. But that's just me. Um, uh, Ramos Carey 17 said, I was doing so good with intermittent fasting, lost 30 pounds, and then I stopped. I don't know how to get back. Okay. Now, I'm not sure if you mean that you were doing really good with intermittent fasting, you lost 30 pounds, and then the weight loss stopped, or that you stopped doing intermittent fasting, and now you don't know how to get back to intermittent fasting. So I'll take it both ways. First of all, if the weight loss just stopped, and this kind of goes back to plateaus, if it has stopped for say 10 weeks, like you've been like really, really consistent and it has just stopped, you're at the same weight, you know, no downward change at all. 
um, then I would say you have a couple of options. One is you can keep going with your plan. Like if you really like your plan, what you're doing right now, you can be patient for a while and just say, well, I guess I'll maintain here for a while and see if this plan will take me any lower. Or you can make a small tweak to your plan. And I would suggest a very small tweak. Like don't go crazy, just like a small little thing and see if that can get it moving again. Um, you may be down at a good weight. That's another option. Um, you know, like you can plug your numbers into a BMI calculator just to give you a rough idea of, you know, are you at a good weight or not? Um, sometimes we have a little bit of a skewed vision of, of what, a, a, what a good weight is. Um, and there's a, you know, there's a pretty big range of a healthy weight for, for you. So, um, so you can kind of, once you see like where you're at weight wise, you know, if, if you're still, you know, overweight and you're really wanting to lose, then a small tweak. If you're at a, a normal weight and you think like, oh, I want to lose more. Um, I would encourage you to explore that. Like, why do you want to lose more? Be really specific about what your goals are at that point. Um, and then, um, you know, you can try to tweak your plan a little bit, but it's OK to decide to stop losing weight if you're at a good weight. Um, your body's never going to be perfect just spoiler alert, like <laughs> nobody's body is perfect. Um, that's all. Okay. Uh, oh, but if, but if it is that you were losing weight with intermittent fasting and then you just stopped intermittent fasting and you've, you're wondering how to get back to it, um, start real small. Again, start with a short fasting window. I don't care if you were at OMAD and you know, it's like I was doing OMAD. Well, okay, but now you got to start over. So you just start with a short fasting window work your way back up or, or do it however you did before. Like, what did you do before where you got onto intermittent fasting? Um, and, uh, if you find yourself resistant to it, asking yourself why is a good question. Like, what is it that is making you resistant to it? Uh, explore that with yourself, like write it down too. Um, okay. Sandra Goff says, Hello from Sacramento. Thanks for doing what you do. You're welcome. Uh, I have to check my weight daily or it will get away from me. Hey, I'm the same way. Uh, but it can be discouraging when it's not going down. Yep, I get that too. I've lost 100, wow, 130 pounds since 2015. Congratulations to you, Sandra. That is awesome. Uh, 80 pounds the first four months doing low carb and going to the gym. 50 more with keto in the gym and walking. The last 20 just won't budge. Help love your positive attitude. I can't, <laughs> I just can't see you ever losing your temper st saying anything negative. Oh, well, you should live with me. <laughs> Ask my kids if I ever <laughs> uh, just uh, lose my temper. Everybody loses their temper sometimes. Um, thank you. You said God bless you and your family. Um, okay, so first of all, I would love to have you on my channel sometime if you would like to be a part of it or on my podcast too. I do a podcast. It goes a new episode live every Tuesday. Um, so, okay. The last 20 pounds. Okay. So, um, again, I would recommend, you know, I don't know, you know, when you say tw those last 20 pounds based on what, like, um, because sometimes we have it in our heads like, oh, that weight that I weighed when I was 16. <laughs> I don't know if that's you or not, but some some of us will have that number in our head. Um, but if you've got a, a good reason that you want to be down at that lat, you know, to that 20 pound mark, right? Like that I need to lose 20 more pounds. Um, I would again say the weight loss gets really slow, really, really slow. So be patient, be very, very consistent. Um, let's see. And it sounds like right now you're doing keto and you're, and you're going to the gym and you're walking. I would just say, keep at it, be really patient. Um, you know, and, and if you love your plan right now that you're doing, um, I would say stay with that. Like, uh, the temptation is there to make stuff really hard to try to lose that last 20 pounds. Um, but I would say stick with what's sustainable because if you, if you have to do the unsustainable to get down to that weight, then how is it going to stay off? You know, right? Like it, if it's going to take that kind of measure to get down there, it's probably going to take that kind of measure to maintain it. So always look at the sustainability of it too. Um, so hopefully that helps you. Okay. Uh, Jack K, did you ever have cons consecutive weeks without losing weight when you began this journey? Yes, I did a lot. Um, 20, okay. So 2014 is when I said, I'm going to lose weight. I didn't really lose any weight that year. Uh, 2015, I lost about 15 pounds. So there were a lot of weeks then that I did not lose weight. I mean, I was not being consistent. 
when I was being consistent, I was losing about a pound a week. Um, so that shows you how consistent I was. Um, uh, and then in 2016, again, like I said, I had uh, a couple of different times that I was stuck for a whole month. So yeah, I have lots of times. And again, that goes back to why I like to track my weight the way I do. Uh, Jill Sterling says, how long does it take to adjust to fat burning mode? Did I know when it happened to me? No, I didn't know. All I ever look at is, you know, is my weight going down and, uh, you know, are my clothes fitting better? <laughs> and, uh, that showed me, you know, obviously like if you look at before and after pictures of me, I've burned fat, but I never knew when I was in fat burning mode. All I did was I weighed every day, kept track of my seven day average and focused on consistency. Uh, but as far as just how long does it take to adjust to intermittent fasting? Um, I would say if you go really gradually with it, then it's really easy. Like you just don't have much of a transition there. People who go from like eating five to six times a day down to OMAD, and some people do that, um, usually it's a couple of weeks, sometimes three weeks, sometimes less. Uh, sometimes people are like, oh, I started the next day and I'm just, it was, it was like no adjustment at all. And I say hats off to you if that's the way it was for you, but that's not the way it went for me. So I was very, very gradual. So, uh, anon, but anon, hey, Kayla, oh, I've become quite the house walker now that my health is allowing it. Yay. Uh, over 10,000 steps a day inside. Got heavy a Fitbit too. He wants to catch up to me now. That is awesome. It's so fun when you both have Fitbits, um, uh, Jay's got his Fitbit, uh, now, and, uh, we both, you know, uh, do our six miles every day and we walk together and it's fun. Um, and, uh, so that's, that's great. I'm so glad to hear house walking for you guys who don't know what we're talking about. Um, in the beginning, I got all of my steps, all my six miles in the house, um, because I found that was a way to excuse proof my, my, my day, like I, 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 or my steps at least, not my whole day, but my steps, like there was no excuse for me to not get them in because inside the weather is always fine. Uh, it's temperature controlled. Even you can get some water. If you're thirsty, it's not raining, you know, um, even if it's late at night, you can still be walking back and forth. So, um, I'll even walk inside this RV, <laughs> just pacing back and forth if the weather's bad. So I love house walking. I love RV walking. <laughs> so uh, there you go. Good to hear from you, Kim. Um, Esma says, hello, Kayla. You have been very helpful to me in terms of your mindset. Oh, thanks. I just wanted to ask you, what is your stance on keeping a food journal while doing intermittent fasting, but no calorie counting? Okay. So that's a great question. I don't think anybody's ever asked me that. Um, okay. So I did start in 2015, uh, because I read like, oh, it's great if you just keep a food journal. Uh, because I, w I was in a hurry. Again, like this went back to, I was really in a hurry. I wanted to speed up the weight loss. And so uh, I thought, okay, well, it will help me if I keep a food journal. So I started like, um, I think for a while there, I wrote it down, but then I started logging it into the Fitbit app. And I wasn't really noticing any faster results. So I thought, well, now I need to start like really tracking my calories. Like I'm going to like really get exact with this. And so I quickly became obsessed with calorie counts and trying to have a big deficit. And then that got me in an even bigger rush. I like drove myself crazy. I was weighing and measuring all my food and it made me really resentful. <laughs> and uh, eventually I, I quit it. I just said, I'm just not... Uh, counting calories anymore. So that's where it led me. But I will say this. I think like writing down what you're eating can be an eye opener as far as it can show you maybe how much you're eating. If you think to yourself, like, I'm not really eating that much. It can show you like, oh, wow. Like when you log every bite of food that you take, every, you know, like thing you pick up just mindlessly, I think it can help. Um, it can also kind of trigger you to think, wait, you know, I don't really want to write this down. <laughs> so like maybe it will, will kind of prevent you. But again, I, I again felt more restriction with that. Um, so I ended up not sticking with it. So I, I would say if you do it, you know, like just always be aware of, are you starting to resent it or do you really find it empowering? Always do those things you find empowering, I think is a good rule of thumb. Um, okay. 
uh, Marine AR, or sorry, Maine AR. There we go. Do you do extended fast as well? I just did a four day fast and a five day fast a few months ago. Felt amazing. Oh, wait. No, sorry. That was not your question. Maine AR says, I'm new and on week number three of Oh Man. I've never felt better and the weight is coming off very quickly. That's awesome. Congratulations. Um, uh, I think a lot of people find that, that like, you just, you've never felt better and the food tastes good. And I just really enjoy OMAD a lot. Okay. So I'm glad you're having success, main AR. Um, Sandra says, uh, Sandra Goff, do you do extended fast as well? I just did a four day fast last week and a five day fast a few months ago. It felt amazing. Okay. So I waited because I had heard about, um, the possible kind of like cancer prevention, uh, effects of extended fast, like a five day fast. Um, I think it was Dom uh, D'Agostino, who I heard about this from on Tim Ferriss's podcast, but he basically said a five day fast quarterly is what he recommended. I think I've got that right. I think I'm attributing it to the right person, but um, cancer runs in my family. So I thought, you know, that would be probably a real smart thing for me to try is just a five day fast um, every quarter. And, uh, I waited though. I waited for like a year because, uh, in that, at that time, uh, when I first heard about it, I was still trying to lose weight. Um, and I didn't want to confuse myself and, and, and like do an extended fast and drop a bunch of weight. And then like all the psychological stuff that can go with it. Because one thing I had, you know, read about a lot of, um, extended fast is you are going to drop weight, but it's pretty much all going to come back on May, maybe a a couple of pounds might stay off. So I really wanted to be at the weight that I wanted to be at. And I, and I reached that weight when I was like 142, I, that was like 80 pounds. Down. I was like, okay, I'm done here. Um, and I've just been maintaining since then. So I did my first five day fast, uh, in, uh, December, the first week of December, and I'm planning on doing another one, uh, in March. So in a couple of weeks, actually. So, uh, yeah, I, I felt amazing on it. Uh, it was a neat experience. I think you learn a lot from an extended fast. Like to me, those are more mental and it's, it's neat. It's neat. Um, uh, but I don't do them for weight loss. I don't do them for weight loss, but I do them for the other kind of health benefits that I've read about. Um, BVA said with OMAD and taking certain, a certain amount of calories, uh, such as 1700 calories, what difference does it make whether you eat those calories in one meal or two meals or three meals? I thought calories are calories. Okay. Of course, there's going to be a big debate about this, <laughs> but I'll tell you what I think. Cause you asked, I think you're right. I think calories are calories. Um, I've read a little bit of research that says like maybe protein calories are a little bit different than fat calories, which are a little different than sugar calories, but bottom line I really believe it's mostly about the calories and, and that OMAD works because it's really hard to eat too many calories in it if you just have it at one meal. Um, people will argue with me about that and that's okay. Like, you know, uh, I don't know what to tell you, but I, I think you're right. I don't, I don't really think it matters as far as one, two, three. I've talked to people who have lost you know, over a hundred pounds. And the way they did it was they ate five or six small meals a day and they, and it worked and, and they're keeping it off and they feel great. So I think it goes back to, uh, what can you stick with? What can you be consistent with? And really what works for you? Because like, okay, let's, let's talk about the 1700 calories, right? If you try to break that up into three meals. Okay. And that means no snacks at all. Um, some people might find that like, oh, this is like tiny meals and I feel hungry all the time. But like for me, like one meal a day, I feel good and full and I just enjoy it in general. I enjoy that, like getting to have one big meal. I, I feel really uh, satisfied at the end of it. I have plenty of energy for the rest of the, you know, the next day. Um, so I think it really just goes back to probably portion control is another thing. Like people who like bigger portions probably do better on intermittent fasting. People who like smaller portions probably do better on those meal plans where it's like five or six small meals a day. Um, those just leave me feeling really hungry all day long. Um, so yeah, so hopefully that helps you. Uh, Anu, Anupama, 
Prasad says, hello, I'm 150 kg. Will OMAD help me or should I do too mad? Okay, so 150 kg, I, I don't know what that is in pounds. I think it's maybe close to, I'm not sure, maybe I can't remember if it's like you multiply it by times, like if you multiply it by two, I can't remember, but um, uh, that might be close to 300 pounds, maybe 330. 330 pounds. Okay. So will OMAD help you or should you do two mad? Okay. Here's what I would suggest. I would say start where you can. Okay. Some people think OMAD is like too, it's like too extreme right off the bat. Okay. Like they need to adjust. Um, two meals a day, however, I think a lot of people find that that's, that can be doable. Um, just say have just lunch and just supper and that's it. If that to you, if that appeals to you, then I would say try that. Um, or, you know, again, you could start like I did. You could start with like a really short fasting window and just slowly push breakfast to be a little bit later in the day and then, you know, make lunch your first meal and then, you know, uh, go about it that way. The main thing is be patient and be consistent and don't beat yourself up. If you mess up and you know, you're not going to be perfect at it. You might be bad at it at first. A lot of us are really bad at fasting in the beginning. Um, but just be patient. You, you've got weight to lose and it's going to take a while. It will. Um, you may find it's like a pound, maybe two pounds, um, a week. Uh, it really depends on your own personal, like, makeup. And um, so just be really, really patient with yourself. And uh, I, I, I'm i telling you, though, you you can lose the weight and you can do this. Um, just be patient. So I hope that helps. Um, Nature Crafts. Oh, hey, uh, did, she asked, did I regain the, the weight from my five-day fast? Yes, I did. Um, really quickly, too. It was just water weight. Um and plus it was also <laughs> during Christmas time. So that's probably not the best like uh, control, you know, uh, study or anything. So uh, I am curious to see what this next one will be like, like how much will I actually lose? Uh, how much will stay off? How much will come right back on? Um, because like I said, holiday time, you know, that's already a time where you're going to maybe probably put on a couple of pounds anyway. So we'll see. But um, I, I think, uh, I think someone uh, said that they heard Jason Fung say that uh, on an extended fast like that, like a five-day fast, you you can maybe lose a half a pound a day. No, is that right? Yeah, half a pound a day. So, you know, that would be two and a half pounds, maybe, you know. So, um, yeah, so there you go. Uh, Daniel Holmes asked, is there any point in weighing in on a cheat day? Yeah. I think it's good. I think it's more important really to weigh in every day, especially when you're having a cheat day, because it will show you that you gain water weight. Like your weight can go up by three, four pounds and it comes right back off. And it helps you mentally to realize sometimes water weight just like fluctuates and it fluctuates up and it then it will go right back down. And just learning that is empowering because it shows you like these foods, you know, salty, sweet, whatever, these things that seem so forbidden, they don't cause like permanent weight gain. It's not like you eat a piece of chocolate cake and you gain three pounds. You may fluctuate up three pounds because water weight and sugar and all that stuff, but it comes right back off. So I think it's very important to weigh every single day because of those things. Um, and you just have to emotionally detach from the scale. Look at it like you're a scientist, say, okay, here's what you weigh today, Miss Cox. You know, that, that's what, that's the way I talk to myself sometimes. So, um, and I just put it into my Fitbit app and there you go. It's easy. You just, you can choose your emotions. There's my point. You can choose to say, I'm not going to emotionally react to this. I have control over my emotions. Um, okay. Mary Jean says, uh, hello, Kayla. It's nice to keep uh, getting your motivation. Oh, good. Where am I now? I am currently in Florida. Uh, we're about to head north later this week into Georgia, South Georgia. So uh, it's beautiful down here, though. <laughs> like we tried to outrun the cold weather since Phoenix. So that was, oh, gosh, it was so cold. Um, that Well, actually, no, I will say like even when we were in Idaho and that was like in October, I think. 
or maybe even before uh, it was cold and like we went to Southern California and it was a little bit warmer. And then when we get to Phoenix, it was cold and Texas was cold. Louisiana was a little bit warmer. And then now we're in Florida and it's amazing weather here. So like we've been, it's been like 90 degrees <laughs> some days. It's been fantastic. So, um, uh, so, and we're also, uh, we're doing this neat thing on our coffee channel where we're like going around to local coffee shops and interviewing uh, the owners and getting the story on their coffee shop. It's been fun. So uh, Jack K says, what is a full-time RVer? Um, so uh, that's just somebody who travels around the country in their RV and you live in your RV. Um, it's not just an American thing. It's I think it's kind of become a little bit more popular in America at maybe in the past, I don't know, five years or so. I mean, I learned about it about five years ago, but um, we just, we work from the road and uh, my kids homeschool, which we always homeschooled um, and we travel around Like we've traveled from, uh, well, from the East coast to the West coast. And now we're back on the East coast and we're going to head up the East coast uh, now. So that's what, that's what our plans are. So we're full-time traveling, I guess is the way to put it. Uh, some people live in their, on their boat, uh, like they sail full-time and uh, it's just been a neat experience. We've seen a lot of cool stuff so far. So uh, Amy King Crandall says, hello, before doing a longer fast, should I eat more or less the day before? More good fats. Okay. I'm like the worst one to ask because <laughs> the day before my five day fast, my husband made the chewy from uh, so it's Alton Brown's chocolate chip cookie recipe. And I ate a lot of those and it was my cheat day too. Like, so it was Sunday. So I'm already eating, you know, like three meals, whereas I normally would only have uh, one meal a day. Uh, and he made those cookies. So I did the, probably the exact opposite of what people would say. People, would probably tell you the best way to start an extended fast to make it as easy as possible on yourself would to, would be to eat like very, very low carb or maybe even no carb um, and have a lot of good fat and a lot of protein. And I didn't do that. <laughs> so, so I still did fine though. I, I think don't overthink it. Um, you know, like you could, you could try it either way. I would, I would probably just stick with what your normal routine is um, and if you're an experienced faster, okay. So, uh, if you're experienced, then you already have the mental game down, uh, because that's really what it comes down to is just mentally, you have to say, I'm not eating for, you know, however, however many days you've said, I'm not going to eat. Um, it, so you're going to bleed at some point. And if you know how to deal with hunger, then it really doesn't matter. So, I mean, you know, if you're trying to make it as easy as possible, I would say probably high fat, probably you shouldn't have, I love carbs. So I plan on, on my next fast to do the same exact thing I did this past time. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do it the same time of week too. So uh, I'm going to have my cheat day as normal on Sunday. And then on Monday, so I'll, I'll start my fasting probably about six something on Sunday and then I'll break it on Friday. So uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Consensus in the group. Uh, exercise does not help with weight loss, but it does help with mood. Yes. I, yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, exercise is great for your mood and, and being in a good mood is really important. I think to sticking with your plan. Um, if you're in a bad mood, it's really hard to, I mean, cause it's really easy to start to think, Oh, what's the point? What's the use? you know, and get in that negative headspace. But if you say instead, I feel really good. And, you know, if you're feeling good, it's easier to stick with it. So yeah, I, so I totally agree with you guys. Um, Gio Wisemondo, hopefully I pronounced that right. Oh, Wiseman. Sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. He had not put a space in between Wiseman and do. Um, she says, do you eat all, or do you all eat more than one plate? Is it a little plate or normal? Okay. So, I eat, um, Joe, you got that, can you, can you hand me a plate? I want to show them what size it is. I'll show you my plate because I can't remember exactly how big it is. I think it's like nine inches maybe, but this is the size plate I use. It's Fiesta wear. I love Fiesta wear, but um, 
So I eat from this size plate. I used to have bigger plates, like they're probably like this big. And um, I found that if I used that bigger plate and I, and I just ate whatever I wanted, I tended to feel overly full and like miserable at the end of the meal. But if I eat off of this plate and I eat as many platefuls as I want, I usually have two, sometimes three, but usually two. Uh, platefuls of food. I, and I mean, that can be, that's not a very exact science either, right? Because if you put less on the plate, then you have more platefuls. But I found that eating from this size plate, I I didn't feel miserable after the meal, which I think just meant I was able to control like portion sizes better or really, there is something psychological, I think, with eating from a small plate, like you just like if you're eating from a bigger plate, your portions are bigger. So then you eat all this on your plate and it can kind of mean that you overeat. But I never had a one plate rule. I know that um, Joe Holman, o OMAD Revolution guy, which uh, he did let me interview him on this channel. And you can see his interview, uh, which I really enjoyed. Um, he uh, he has, I think, a one plate rule. So he just says, like, fill up your plate once, eat whatever you want, you know, on that plate and then you're done. I use the small plate and like, Oh, you can have as many as you want. And that was just my own personal rule. I would say experiment for yourself, see, you know, what you're, what you're having results with. Um, I think the most important thing is you just monitor your results and also make sure you're not feeling miserable at the end of the meal. Like you don't feel overly full. You just feel, you know, good and full, which I think is a good thing. So George wanted me to say hello. Who's George? <laughs> One of the viewers. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me to stick my head in the camera. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that was my husband. I, I, I think most people know you, right? Yeah. Um, some yeah. Some people know him. Some, some people don't. Um, that's my husband, JR. We've been married for 15 years now. We just had our anniversary on Valentine's Day. So, um, uh, but he does a great job. I forgot to mention, he's the one in here moderating comments. Uh, and he puts helpful links when I mention things that, you know, like uh, I'm saying, oh, we'll go here and look at this. He's the one doing all that stuff. So, and he also gets the trolls, you know, away, <laughs> you know, deletes them or whatever he does over there. Um, and he also helps out with answering comments uh, in the actual uh, YouTube video uh, comments because uh, we try to answer as many as we possibly can. So, thank you guys um, for joining me here. Um, I think we've almost come to the end of our time. Uh, so, uh, uh, and if there is any more questions, I've got time for maybe one more. Um, but I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, Q&A session. Jay's giggling over there, so I don't know what. Jack Faye said you pictured me having a sinister mustache. <laughs> I can't grow a mustache, Jay. He, he can't or grow. Jack. Yeah, he could not grow a mustache. He tried one time in Italy, and it would, and we were we were there for like two weeks. Two we weeks. were there for two weeks after he got back um, from Iraq. And he tried <laughs> and it just, <laughs> it did not work. It looked very creepy. So, um, so anyway, thank you guys for joining, uh, this broadcast. Um, thank you for submitting questions. Uh, I hope it was helpful. Uh, if you, uh, need more help, uh, like, you know, like more like a, like step-by-step -step process. Like I said, I do have those courses available on Slow and Steady Success Academy. And we also do an all access pass. I have, um, it's like a subscription to the Academy, which gets you access to all the courses as they become available. I'm doing about a course each month. And um, also uh, that gets you into our private Facebook group. It's just a small group. And I do like a group coaching uh, Facebook live every week. Um, and I answer questions in there and as the instructor inside the courses, like there's a discussion feature. So if you have any questions, uh, as you go through the process, uh, then you can answer, ask your question there. Uh, there's also uh, weight loss success mindset 101, which is a six week course that takes you through all the mindset, um, issues that you might find are tripping you up along the way. Uh, so here's think, one more question. Oh, one more question. How do you explain to family and friends about fasting without them thinking you have an eating disorder? Oh, such a good question. Okay, so how do you explain it to family and friends and, and without them being afraid that you're that you have some sort of eating disorder? Okay, this is a tough one because um, I understand the, the fear there. Um, I didn't discuss it with people for a long time. I just I just didn't mention it. I, I really thought 
I just want to see if this works. Even my husband didn't know that I was doing it. I didn't realize at the time I was not particularly telling him. I guess I was just like seeing if it worked or not before I really started talking about it to people. Um, so it was helpful to me because I was already really confident and I already saw that this is like the opposite of an eating disorder. This is like actually getting control of myself around food, having a healthy relationship with food, having lots of energy, you know, loving my body, you know, being more positive, you know, like there are all these positive changes. So once I got really comfortable with that and I had lost the weight successfully, that's when I started talking with people about it. Um, and I think, you know, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to say keep it a secret because I, I understand, you know, if, if people are asking you, if, if people are bringing it up, I think it is good to just be honest and say, here's what I'm doing. Um, but, uh, I would, I wouldn't just come right out and say it until you feel comfortable with it is the point. Um, but you know, if somebody says that, you know, like, oh, that sounds like an eating disorder. I would probably point them in the direction of people like Jason Fung, uh, any, any kind of like authority, right, who has been doing it and, and has researched it and they can point to all the, you know, the health benefits. Um, and, you know, you can also offer your own uh, testimony of like, well, you know, I know it sounds weird, but here's, you know, here's why I I love it. And here are all the positive changes. If you really focus on the positive and you can be confident with, with what you're telling them, I think people will start to understand it more. Um, uh, but I would say for your own self-protection, maybe don't talk about it until you are confident with it. And you have like, like, okay, I know how to respond to this because I can say, here's how I feel. Um, so there you go. Okay. It's, uh, time to end this broadcast. So thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we will see you back here again next week, Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Bring your friends and I'll see you next week.